Hello once again, Cougar football fans. Greg Rubel here with BYU head football coach Kalani Sataki and with BYU training camp now underway. Welcome to part two of our preseason preview here at Hotel Park City, named as one of America's top 25 hotels as awarded by TripAdvisor's Traveler's Choice Voters in 2022. Well, in part one of our preview, we went to position by position, get Kalani's read on the 2022 Cougars on the field. Let's move from uh, players to Kalani's fellow coaches. And you have to have one of the few staffs in the country where every position coach is back coaching in the same spot he was last season. Yeah, that, that, that's exciting for me to, to have the, the, the um, consistency and, and to have just uh, whenever you add a new coach, there's always a learning curve that, that, has, that takes place. And uh, we feel really good about our, our, our staff. And in fact, uh, I feel really good about their, the ownership of position coaches and their, and their uh, respective groups, but I, I really feel good about the the coordinators and the, the play callers as well. And, and then we've only just added to our staff, our, our support staff, and and with our analysts. And so I, I think um, you know I'm looking forward to really really big things from the from this group and and from the staff. And uh, they have uh, I'm just appreciative that we have all the uh, the support from the administration to give us more resources to work with it. And, and uh, I think the players are going to benefit the most from it. They're, they're, they have a, uh, more mentors to go to. And I, I like the, the fact that our guys, uh, our coaches have relationships with everybody on the team. I like seeing Aaron Roderick talk to our D linemen and our DBs. And I like seeing uh, Eli Satuyaki conversing with, with the O-line. I mean, I, I, I think this is a really good group. And the camaraderie that I'm seeing from the, from the team and from the staff has been amazing. So uh, just honored to be coaching with these guys. So no changes on the on-field staff, but you hit on it. A lot of new additions uh, in the support staff. You have mm -hmm. 10 offensive, defensive, and special teams analysts now to go along with 10 assistant coaches. Uh, there are also additions to strength and conditioning, front office, behind-the-scenes staffs. BYU's made a big commitment to making the program you know, truly P5-ready on the support side. Yeah, and, and that's been um, the just, just from my perspective, perspective to see how how quickly that's taken place I I, I just uh, have tons of gratitude uh, and for the abilities for our, our, our the ability that our, our staff our administrative uh, administration has given us uh, I mean this is I think it's going to be it, we've already seen the benefit of it we've already seen a uh, you know the upward trend from our players I mean adding sports scientists sports nutritionists um, uh, just just overall adding more bodies in there and you are there, there to cater to our players. Uh, that, that's going to be uh, the key. And I, I'm really thankful that Tom Homo values the, the student athletes so much. And uh, it, the, not a lot of uh, resistance when we say, hey, this will benefit our student athletes. Um, and that, that's a good, good thing for me to work for a man that has that in mind. And the fact that he knows all our guys. I mean, he's in and in and talking to them. And, I mean, the game of football still still hadn't changed that much since he played DB, and uh, to have a, a a guy that played in the NFL and played here at BYU to to talk to our DBs has been been really uh, beneficial for us. And we so we talk about our support staff on football, but you look at all the mentors and the the leaders that we have on on the third floor in our administration and the connection that they have, our administration has with our players. I think this is it's second to none. I mean, it's amazing. The connection that our players and the, the the how comfortable they feel with administrators that that's a big part of, of Tom Homo's leadership. Let's talk about the 2022 schedule now. It's a BYU's 12th and final schedule as an FBS independent. Uh, five P5s on the slate: uh, two in September, two in October, one in November. So some good balance there. Yeah, I mean uh, the schedule. You know, for me, it's focused on South Florida, right. but. But uh, you you recognize the other eleven on the schedule, and you you see the opportunities and uh, the 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 difficulty in it. But um, we're always up for a challenge, and this is this is a big part of why I wanted to be the head coach is that I saw these future schedules uh, back when I was hired in December of 2015. And I said this is what I want to be a part of. I feel like it's it's a good way to test our guys and and get us ready for the for the P5 level. We knew that. It would be an opportunity for us if we did things right to eventually get into a, a conference. And now we're um, headed towards the Big 12, and I think we're in a really good spot. The key would be for us to um, 
uh, be able to just kind of for us to keep doing things to be consistent throughout the every game and playing at the, at the top of our level rather than uh, and handling adversity, whether it's injuries or whatever or weather, uh, whatever the whatever the, the the adversity may 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 show is being able to just uh, stand uh, against it and be able to you know come out victorious. And that's the key. I think our players are feel really comfortable on where we're at, but uh, my job is to find us to find ways to make them more uncomfortable and, and to grow from it. And hopefully we can get that accomplished in fall camp. Just a few more schedule notes. Um, three Mountain West teams on the schedule, Utah State, Wyoming, Boise State, Utah Tech goes on the docket for a second in-state game. You have some East Coast travel to Liberty for the first time. And of course, the season opener at South Florida. And a lot of your guys have some maybe not so pleasant memories of the last trip to Tampa. So there's there's that in play. Yeah, and that's starting with the quarterback, you know. So I know that they want to get back to that game. And and you know when we played them last year, I thought it was a uh, it was a good game. Um, we didn't finish it out the right way. And so uh, a, a lot of uh, intrigue and interest is going into this game from a lot of different individuals and their own personal. Uh, views of the game, but for us, it's just team-wise to go play our best, uh, have a lot of fun with it, and and if we do that, I think we'll be able to to be happy with the result and and uh, tons of respect for that program. I know that I mean they're they're adding a quarterback Bohannon that that beat yeah. us from Baylor, yeah. you know, so uh, they've added a, a good number of talent to their team and they've developed some young guys from throughout the season. I, I've watched them closely and been really impressed with what with, with, with their coaching staff has been able to do with them. So uh, it's going to be a tough game and we're expecting their best. And and uh, my job is to make sure that we bring our best and we'll see what happens. The home opener this season, particularly intriguing, it's Baylor in week two. And not only is it a rematch of a game that uh, the Bears won last year in Waco, but it is, of course, a preview uh, of Big 12 Conference football. It'll be a conference game for you in future seasons. Yeah, and how awesome is it to have our, our you know, the Big 12 champions uh, come into Provo, you know, and and then um, and, and there's some f familiar faces on the other side that are coming through and, mm -hmm. and they're, you know, they know us, they're familiar with our team and our program. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I felt like last year um, we didn't play our best, but that, that's because Baylor made it really difficult for us. And uh, and, and they went on to win the, 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 the championship, the conference championship. And so if we want to be uh, top dog, then, then it's kind of kind of fun that we get to get the the champion returning, you know, returning champs in in, in our home, and um, it's going to be fun. We want to introduce them back to Provo and welcome that group here and see what 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 can happen. And that brings us to the new era for BYU football life in the Big Twelve, uh, starting in 2023. Uh, but sometime later this season, your first ever Big Twelve schedule will be released. Your full focus is on 2022. Mm -hmm. We get that, but it's going to be great. Uh, to look ahead a bit and once again think about playing for a title and then creating and renewing annual rivalries. Yeah, and I think with with that being in the future, I mean, I'm not going to be blind to it and 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 uh, ask our guys never to think about it, especially for our underclassmen. But uh, the priority is on our, our on our seniors and uh, the guys that are playing their last year this year. You know, the, to give them. Uh, the, the best experience that they can have and, and make sure that we do that first. And uh, But it's also comforting knowing that we're going to a, a bona fide conference that uh, that we haven't, our fans haven't, I, I'm really excited for the fans. Our have, fans haven't had that experience. Um, and so the, it, because that's happening, it's brought a lot more focus to me for the last year that we have in the independence. And, and that's, you know, let's, 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 let's make it a lot of fun, you know, and, and uh, I think the move to independent, I wasn't here when that first started, but uh, I'm, I'm honored to be a part of that and, and to see how much the team has grown in the last six to seven years that I've been here. Uh, I remember those schedules looking really daunting and, and I, we've had conversations where it's like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be really tough on us, but we've learned a lot of, a lot of lessons along the way. And, I don't think you could learn those lessons unless you went through the fire of it all, you know, and and uh, the, the toughness of the of, of starting with those type of schedules of P5s uh, loaded, a schedule loaded with P5s and, and, and loaded with traveling to two different time zones and, and making things really difficult on us in, in that aspect. And I think it's made our program better because of it. And uh, the goal is to keep that independent mindset going through that the things that we've learned, the adversity that we've overcome. 
and then um, making it all count this last year and then taking that same type of identity into a new conference is going to be a lot of fun. Tumultuous times in college football, uh, more realignment, mm -hmm. uh, NIL a bigger deal all the time. How do you like where BYU is positioned with all of it to maybe do things the BYU way? Yeah, that's we're always going to do it BYU way, and that's in line with the the mission of our uh, of our university and the mission of our church. You know, and and that's going to be the key for us, and and it's an honor for me to 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 run the program that way. And uh, although it's never perfect, I, I think when you do things and you have an identity and and you know what your um, what your identity is then uh, it's easier to withstand whatever the issues may be, whether it's COVID or uh, transfer portal or NIL or whatever, whatever may, may show up. Um, uh, I think uh, it allows us to keep bringing our type of guys here to the program uh, that, that fit our program, whether they're members of the church or not. I, I know that they really uh, love the opportunity of representing um, what the school and what the church wants us to represent. And uh, hopefully we can keep doing that the right way. And, and, and I think with with whatever comes, I, I don't know what the future holds, but uh, I can say it, it'll probably be uh, a little bit um, disruptive and, and could could uh, get, get a lot of people's focus, um, you know, to go wayward. But we've seen the focus that we have and I've seen the leadership that we have in our university, our church and, and uh, in our administration. And I feel really comfortable uh, being able to work with those individuals. And I think we're going to be fine no matter what happens. Well, the 22 season just around, 2022 season just around the corner and, and camp is underway. Have you settled into what you think is maybe the ideal way to, to run a camp, prepare for a long season? And what are you most eager to see out of these, these weeks in August? Yeah, like um, basically how this year is going to shape up. Uh, we've gone into every year with a different mindset. I, I don't believe in just doing things just because you did it in the past and it gave you success. I, I really believe in having a solid foundation and then being able to fluctuate and, and, and adjust according to what your team needs. We have a different group now than we did last year. So uh, why would camp last year be the same camp that it would be this year? Um, my goal is to get us to perform at our best. And you can do that in a lot of different ways. I, I like to make our guys uncomfortable and it doesn't have to be physically uncomfortable. I like, to, I like to test them mentally and get them in a position where when you do that and you put them in a position where they they have to be vulnerable and they have to rely on others and trust others, uh, a good team should, should emerge from it. And that's, that's the goal. And, um, so the camp this year is going to be way different than last year and probably different than the years before, but they have to be because the, the players are different. Jaron Hall's a returning starter now. Last year he was battling for the starting spot, you know, so uh, the approach that A-Rod has with him and what he has with Jacob Conover and Finnegan and the others in the in the, in the room is going to be a way different um, approach than he had in 2021. And that goes for every position group and it goes for the head coach too. So I, I just, I don't know, I'm looking forward to, to get being around the boys and, and uh, I can't wait to see the fans and, and, and uh, you know see them representing whether we're on the road or when we're at home. Just seeing all, all the blue everywhere is going to be a lot of fun. I, I can't wait. I'm, I'm, I'm just so, I just wish it was here already. <laughs> I know. You know what I mean? So it's like, when you talk to me about camp, it's like, let's get camp going so we can get it out of the way, right. get the guys ready, and then let's get to it. But, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're about a month away, so I'm, I'm really excited about where we're headed. Well, I'm with you. Can't wait for the season to start. We look forward to it all. And thank you for watching this BYU football preseason preview from right here at beautiful Hotel Park City, where you'll find world-class accommodations, Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, a full-service spa, and, of course, a great golf course in amazing surroundings. Uh, you can book a room today and have them host you, too. Kalani, great to be with you. Appreciate it, Greg. All right, BYU head football coach Kalani Sitake. I'm Greg Rubel. Go Cougs.